Hello my fellow gamesters and welcome back to another Disney Infinity 3.0 toy box tutorial. My name is Ron aka Daddy Geek and yes that is Yoda and yes that is a flying cookie. In this tutorial we are going to take a look at the newest greatest thing ever added to Disney Infinity and that is the Path Creator. With this toy we can make some amazing gameplay, some awesome cinematics. It is really a wonderful toy and I can't wait to show you what we can do with it. However before we get started there's one thing you need to know. Even though the path creator itself is very easy to understand, it's very simple to use, it is also incredibly powerful. And with it we can create some really advanced game mechanics within our toy boxes. Now, because of that, I'm going to split this tutorial up into three separate episodes. Episode 1, this episode, is going to cover the basics. We're going to see what the path creator is, how it works, what it can do. We're going to take a look at its properties. We're going to goof around and see some examples of it. And by the end of this episode, we're going to take those, that basic knowledge of the path creator and we're going to use it to recreate three star destroyers crashing into each other. Now if you see my recent live stream or the latest video that I put up on YouTube, in it you'll see that we took three star destroyers and using the path creator we had them crash into each other. Now when that happened during the live stream that was just that was one of those awesome gaming moments because you know we were messing just messing around in the toy box and I was not expecting the results that we got and when it happened it was just it was fantastic. It's one of the reasons why I love this game. Now if you stick around to the end of the episode, we're going to actually recreate that step by step. Now, episodes two and three, they're going to cover the more advanced features of the Path Creator. And with it, we're going to see some really cool examples of things you can do within your toy box using the Path Creator. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. And if you're looking at your screen right now, you can see a perfect example, or a simple example, I should say, of the Path Creator in action. If we pull out our magic wand, you can see that the cookie is simply doing nothing more than traveling along the path. It, at its simplest form, that's exactly what the path creator is. It allows you, it's a toy that allows you to draw your own path throughout the toy box and then you can attach other objects and toys to this path and give them movements and behavior and logic. Now, we can also give behavior and logic to the path itself and also every point along the path. So if you take all that into consideration, you can see how we can come up with some pretty complex and some pretty cool gameplay mechanics. Alright, in order to get started, unfortunately, we're going to have to get rid of this. And that's just how the cookie crumbles. But um, anyway, let's go ahead and get rid of this path because we're going to need all the room we can get. Let's go ahead and put away our magic wand and let's go over to the empty part of the toy box. And we can get there super fast because this Yoda is awesome. All right. So once we get over here, there's one thing I'm going to point out real quick because I know I'm going to get asked in the uh, comment section. The terrain texture we're using is Echo Base and also the Sky Dome we're using is Echo Base. Now the reason why you're not hearing any music is because we had to turn it off. One, the music gets incredibly loud. When it crescendos, you can't hear anything, including me, and that makes for a very weird tutorial. And number two, because they ripped the music directly from the movie, it's all copyrighted, and it will cause YouTube to have a fit and throw some issues, and uh, we don't want that. So, unfortunately, we had to turn the music off. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the path creator itself. We're going to bring up our editor, and we're going to scroll through our ribbon until we find Creativity Toys. And there we are. Now if we go to our left, we'll find the path creator. Now, it doesn't look like much when you first bring it out. It's just a green diamond. This is our initial placement point. This is our anchor point for the path. From, once we place this down from there, that's where we draw our line or we draw our path. Now, here's a little pro tip. If you notice, by default, when we bring out the path creator, it's sunken halfway down into the terrain. And there's a reason for this, because as we go ahead and we use the path creator and we make our path, and I'm going to show you that right now, if we place our initial point down, this is our anchor point, this is the beginning point from where we draw our path. If we go to the right, you'll notice that it's drawing a line. Now, since we have, since the actual path creator is sunken halfway down in the, into the terrain, you see that the line is sitting flush or right on top of the terrain. Now, by default, anything that you connect to the path creator is going to want to sit on top of that line and follow along that path. So by leaving the path creator here, halfway buried into the into the terrain, anything that we attach to it will look like it's actually moving along the terrain. So this is really good for like enemies or for vehicles or you know anything that you want to do. Now that doesn't mean we can't go up. We can actually you can actually move the path creator up and down, left and right, for you scientifically inclined. That's horizontal and vertical. Um, you can put it anywhere you want, and really you can create any shape you want. You want to create a figure eight, go ahead, you can. There's really not too much in the limitations when it comes to actually creating your path with the path creator. But for the sake of our tutorial, we're going to go all the way down onto the terrain. And we're going to draw a line. Let's see. The toy we're using is pretty big, so we want a pretty decent sized line. Um, a little bit longer. About there is good. 
and we're going to place our next point. Now, if you look at the bottom of the screen, you see we have the option to add a point. The initial point that we place down, that is the actual path creator, that's the actual toy, and that's our anchor point. Every point we put down after that is called a path point. So let's put this down, and now let's go to our left, and you'll notice as we start to move, the shape of the path starts to change, and you can see that they automatically added a curve. And the reason for this is, even though you can try to make some really sharp angles with the path creator, by default it kind of wants to soften the curves and make the curves a little bit softer so you, as the toys travel along the path they move at a little bit of smoother animation and that's a good thing. So we're going to go a little bit further out and we'll put our next point here and now we're going to hook back towards the beginning and if you notice the path changes and it gets a little bit more cleaner and a little bit takes a little bit better shape. We'll go a little bit further, uh, a little bit more than that and we'll put our last point down. Now we're going to back out of here and we're going to bring up our magic wand. Now before we bring up the magic wand, as you can see, the path is invisible. The only time you're going to see this path is if you have your magic wand out, you're in the editor, or you're in spark mode. So once you actually place this down and you get everything attached to it, get everything you want done, and you upload your toy box, you share your toy box with the community, nobody else is going to see this. So let's go ahead and pull out our magic wand, and let's take a look at the different points. Now, this next part is really important, and here's why. Let's go ahead and bring up the logic of the path creator. This is our initial starting point. And as you see, it says path creator, and under logic, it says new logic connection, new path connection, and properties. Now, this is what's very important. This is the main brains of the entire path. So any changes we make here, especially to the properties, are going to have a rippling effect throughout the entire path. So if we change, say, the speed of the path here and the properties of the main brain, that's going to affect the entire path. So keep that in mind. Now let's take a look at one of the other path points. Let's just pick this last one here. If we bring up the logic for that, we see it says path point. So the original starting point is the actual path creator, and any other point we put down after that is called the path point. Now we see that this has its own logic and its own properties. Now, here's the difference. Anything changes we make here to the properties only affect this path point. It does not affect the rest of the path. That will go for any other path point, where if we change the logic or if we change the properties over at the beginning point, at the starting point, the main brains of the path, that has a rippling effect. So that's really important, so keep that in mind as you're starting to use the path and start placing things down. All right, we're going to back out of here, and we're going to see the path tool in action, and we're going to attach something to it. So let's go into our editor, and let's scroll up until we get to set pieces. We could use a regular building block, but that's no fun. There we go, set pieces, and as we scroll to our left, you'll see there's the Star Destroyer. That thing is amazing. Look at the detail on that, and besides that, look how huge it is. It's even bigger than the terrain piece. All right, let's keep going, and we're actually going to use a snow ship. I like to call this thing the icebreaker, but it's called a snow ship, a boat, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to go ahead and place it down. Now, we're going to attach the boat to the path. Now, here's something that the veterans of 1.0 and 2.0 uh, might, might see. Okay, come on, spit it out, Junior. Okay. Now, if you notice when we highlight, say, this set piece, the Echo Base Station over here, you see that normally we only have two, maybe three options, move, delete, and possibly retheme. However, with the addition of the path creator, if we highlight the boat, you'll see we actually have logic for it. And if we bring it up, you'll see that we get a new path connection. Any toy that has this option available to it means you can attach it to the, to the path toy. Now, Unfortunately, not every single object can be attached to the path, but there are quite a bit of things that can be attached to the path, including logic toys like, say, uh, Locator. It can make for some really interesting gameplay. Um, you're just going to have to experiment with yourself and see what can be attached to it and what can't. So we're going to make a new path connection. Now, if you notice, we highlight the beginning anchor point. We can make our path connection. If we try to connect it over here to one of these other points, we can't. You can only make your initial connection right here at the very beginning, at the initial anchor point of your path. So we'll go ahead and we'll highlight it and we'll connect it. We'll say Toy Box Path. And as you can see, as Yoda gets knocked out of the way by the boat, the boat immediately attached itself to the path and it started to move. You also notice that it doesn't look quite right because it's moving sideways. We're going to change all that. Now the reason why I did that is because the default behavior of the path creator is to automatically attach an item to it and start moving. If we bring up the properties, we're going to see that we can change that. So let's bring up the properties. And uh, the first thing we see under properties is active. Now, what this means is nothing more than power. This is like a power switch. When it's on, obviously there's power going to the path creator, and anything that's attached to it will start to move. And, you know, you can, a logic will fire off. It'll function as normal. If we turn it off, you see that the boat stops moving. 
that's because we cut all power to the path and anything that's on the path is going to immediately come to a screeching halt. It's not going to move anymore. Now we can, we can change that here in the properties or we can also affect it with another logic toy, say a button. We could have a button that can be pressed to turn the path on or off. We're going to turn it back on and we're going to look at the next property. That's called speed. Now you'll notice it says 100. That represents percentage. What that says is that anything that we attach to the path is going to move at 100% or normal speed. Now if we wanted things to move slower, we could drop it down to 50. If we want things to move double speed or faster, we can put it at 200. That's what we're going to do. No, not 2. That would be incredibly slow. 200. And as you can see, the, the boat is now moving at twice the speed. It's moving much faster. Now, remember, we're messing with the properties of the actual main creativity toy itself, so any other toy that we attach at this point is going to automatically want to move at double the speed or 200%. We're going to change this back down to 100, and we're going to look at the next property. This next property is called looped, and if you see, we have our initial starting point and then our end point of our path. Once the boat gets to the end point of the path, it just resets itself. It, it disappears and reappears at the beginning and starts all over again. Now, if we change this to looped and we back out of here, you'll see that the path creator itself actually made a connection from the very last point that we placed down to the beginning point. It basically just, as it says, made a loop. And as you can see, it tries to it tries to keep the shape that you started drawing. And as you see, instead of the boat disappearing, it's just going to smoothly continue around in a loop around the path. Let's get back into the properties and we'll turn that off. Now this next option is called Rail Slide. This is something we're going to get into a little bit later on in the tutorial. Uh, but for right now, we really don't need to mess with it. What it really means is, is by turning this on, we have turned the path into a rail slide. So we can make our own custom rail slides. And we're going to see an example of that in a, in a future tutorial. But for right now, we'll just leave this off. Now the only other option we want to concern ourselves with at this moment, we will go through every other single property as we move on in the tutorial. But for right now, the last thing we want to take a look at is it says auto start objects when connected. What this means is, as you saw, when we first connected the boat to the path and immediately connected itself and started moving. That's what this means. When this is on, whatever you attach to the path will immediately start moving. Nine times out of ten you're going to want to turn this off because that way once you place your path point down and you go ahead and turn this off, anything you connect to the path will stay still and then you can adjust its position, its logic, its properties, and then you can go ahead and turn the path on by using another logic connection. For now we're going to leave it on and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the properties of another path point. So we'll bring up, and uh, you know what, we actually want that middle path point. So let's take a look at that. We'll get around the boat. And we'll hurry up and target it before the boat gets here. There we go. And we'll go under properties. Now, you're only going to see two options here. One says path checkpoint display. And what that is, is another function of the path uh, creator. And this is why we're going to need so many episodes, is you can also use it to make a race. And each path point can be a checkpoint. It makes making your own custom races much easier and a lot more fun and we'll get into that later on. Now the one thing we want to look at though is called speed modifier. This is the percentage. We can actually change the speed of this actual path point. It's in percentage just like it was before and it's at 100 which is the normal speed. We're going to increase this to 200 and see what happens. And we're going to back out of here so you can see better. Now if you'll notice the boat starts to pick up speed as it approaches that path point and once it gets past it, you'll notice the boat starts slowing back down again. What's happening is, is the, is the path creator is making a smooth transition. As the boat gets closer to that point that we change the speed of, it speeds up until once it hits that point, it's going at that speed, which is 200%. Once it gets past that path point, it starts to slow back down to its normal speed. Pretty neat, right? So think about that. You can, have, you can adjust the speed of each individual path point and create some really unique platforming experiences. Let's go ahead and put that back down to normal. And now we're actually going to take a look at the properties of the object that's actually attached to the path. Once we attach an object to the path, it actually comes up with new properties. So if we go underneath it here and we see properties, we see toy box path. Go into here and the very first thing you see, once again, is speed. And what this is, besides being a percentage once again, we can actually affect the individual speed of each individual item on the path. So you can have 
a certain speed set on the path itself. You can change the speed of each individual path point and you can change the speed of each individual item attached to the path. So you can imagine there can be some really created, crazy or creative, however you want to say it, um, gameplay brought about by changing the speed of all the, all the above. So for this we're going to change it to 200 and we're going to speed it up again so you can see what happens. We're going to back out of here. And as you can see, once again, the boat's moving faster. Now, to show you what happens when we add another object to the path, we're going to bring out a regular building block. I know we said we weren't going to use one, but it's the easiest way to demonstrate this. There we go, just a basic square block. And we're going to place it down. Now we're going to attach it to the path. Once again, normally this block wouldn't have money options, but as you can see, we actually now have logic. New path connection. We're going to attach it to our path. Maybe. Eventually. Oh my goodness. Ah, get out of the way, boat. And we're going to say new path. Oops. Darn it. New path connection. We'll try this one more time. And we'll say new toy box path. Now, as you can see, the, bo uh, the, yeah, the boat is moving much faster than a block. As a matter of fact, it's probably going to end up lapping the boat. See how much faster it's going than the actual block? That's because the de default speed of the actual path itself is only normal or 100%. We have the boat going at 200%. So now you can see the difference of having different speeds on different objects on your path. So let's go ahead and let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this block. Let's wait for the boat to pass on by. Come on, big boat, get out of the way. Oh my goodness. There we go. See what I mean? It's much easier if you have everything turned off and you're trying to make some adjustments. All right, let's go ahead and bring the boat back down to normal speed. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is one of the really cool features of the path. If we, this says orient along path, if we turn this on, you're going to notice the boat is now lining itself up properly with the path. What this does is it tries to keep the forward facing or the front of the toy facing the correct position as it moves and as it, as it moves along the path. So we'll back out and we'll see it in action. And as you can see, it even makes that nice smooth transition, that turn, and it keeps itself facing forward. Once it reaches the end, it's going to disappear and look, there it goes. It reappears and it's keeping itself oriented properly along the path. That is a very cool feature. Let's go ahead and bring up the properties again. And now we're going to look at these next three options because they all share similar features. What this says is it says reef set point, start point, and end point, and it's all in a percentage. In this case, though, the percentage, instead of dealing with speed, it deals with the entire length of the path. So 0% is going to be the beginning of your path. 100% is going to be the end of your path. Now, the values here are going to alter depending on how long your path is. So this path is kind of short, so 10% should make a pretty decent difference. If you have this very long, you know, long, complicated path, 10% might only be a really fraction of an inch that, that, that your object moves. So what reset point is, is that is where whenever we give the, um, whenever we give the path a command of reset and stop or reset and play, that is the point, that is the, the default point that the boat or the object that we have attached to the path is going to reset itself to. Now start point, that's where the object that you attach to the path is going to start from and end point is where the path will stop so we're going to change both the reset point start point and end point we're going to make the reset point and the start point at 10 percent and we're going to change the end point to about 60. now you can't type this in so you got to have to scroll and it takes a few seconds and now we're going to back out here and we're going to see what happens now, if you notice, the boat is not going to make it all the way around the path anymore. It's going to get it 60%, and it's going to stop and disappear and reappear back at the beginning again. Now, if we look at the beginning, you're going to notice that the boat isn't quite as far back as it used to be. As you can see, it starts further along the path. So that allows you to customize where the, where the objects start, stop, and where they reset on the path. So we're going to go ahead and change everything back to normal. We'll put this at zero, we'll put the start point at zero, and put the end point back at 100%. 
Now, for these next set of options, we're actually going to go out of here and we're going to delete this vote and we're going to add two buttons because this will make it easier for us to see all these changes in action. Let's go ahead and delete the vote and we're going to go into our ribbon and we're going to pull out two basic buttons. Go back to Creativa Toys. And all we're looking for here is just a couple buttons. We need two. One to start and one to start. Uh, yeah, one to stop and one to start. Something like that. Alright, this first button we're going to do new logic connection pressed and we're going to connect it to the path maybe and we're going to you see the options that we have we have on and off this is exactly the same as the active in the properties this is the power if we press if we set this to on when we press the button it powers up the path if we set it to off we power down the path what we want here is reset and stop and what that means is it will reset any objects on the path back to their reset position and it will make them stop. So that's what we're going to choose. And now this next button, we're going to do the exact opposite. We're going to choose reset and play. So new logic connection, pressed. We're going to connect it and we're going to say reset and play. Now let's go ahead and connect our boat. But before we do that, let's change the properties of the path itself. If you remember what we were talking about a few minutes ago, you can go in here and you can turn auto start objects when connected off. So we're going to turn that off and we're going to see what happens when we connect the boat this time. If you remember last time it automatically started. This time it should connect itself to the path and just stay put. We'll go back to set pieces. There we go. And we'll put out another boat. Now we'll go ahead and connect the boat to the path just like we did before. New path connection target our initial path point. Toy box path and as you can, <laughs> oh no I'm stuck under the boat. I got too close. As you can see the boat is now connected to the path but it is standing still. Now if we hit the reset and play button the boat will reset itself and it will begin to move and it will go to the end and it will continue to do just like we saw before. It will continue to do its default behavior, behavior which is loop. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use reset and stop and we're going to bring it to a stop again. We're going to highlight it and we're going to go under properties and we're going to go toy box path and now we're going to look at the horizontal and vertical offset. This actually applies to the position of the actual object on the path. Actually before we do that because it'll make it look a little bit easier and a little bit better let's go ahead and orient this thing along the path. Go under properties, toy box path and we're going to turn orientation on and we're going to reset the boat so it looks correct. There we go. Now let's go ahead and bring the properties back up again. And the horizontal and vertical offset you know apply to the position of the actual object on the path. So horizontal is going to be left and right of the path. Vertical is going to be up and down of the path or on or above and below I should say. So if we go, and it's, it's based on the actual position of your path. So if we go negative, we're going to go to the left of the path. If we go positive, we're going to go to the right of the path. So if we say we move this thing, say, four units negative to the left, you're going to see what happens. And this is not a percentage. This is represented in units. And if we hit reset, you'll see what happens. The boat has now shifted four units to the left. Actually, we could have made that a little bit more so we could have seen it a little bit better. But now we're going to shift it four units to the right. And actually, let's go ahead and let's play it. We'll do this while it's moving. Okay, we're going to target it. Go back under properties again. Toy box path. And we're actually going to show you a little bit better offset. We're going to go... We'll go eight. And as you notice, the more we push it, the further away to the left it goes. Remember, if you go to the left, if you go negative, you're going to go to the left. If you go positive, you're going to go to the right. So we'll go actually eight units positive. And now you can see is it moved to the right of the path. We're going to put that back down to zero. And we're going to back out of here because we're going to show you a real easy way to, to understand the basic measurements in Disney Infinity. Once again, we're going to go back to our basic building block. And we're going to put it down. In Disney Infinity, four units is the same as one building block. It's the same height and width of one building block. So if we put this down, 
and we highlight our ship and we change the properties we're going to go underneath a vertical this time and we're going to offset it by four now as we back out of here and let the boat continue on its way you're going to notice something it is exactly the same height as a block off of the ground so when you're actually designing your toy box you can use that as a really good measurement to keep in mind how the objects relate to each other so four units is one block so let's go ahead and read let's go ahead and delete our block and now we're going to change it four units uh, down we're going to go four units below the actual toy box path so let's go under here we'll put vertical offset to negative positive is goes up negative goes down and as you can see the boat is actually sinking into the terrain when objects are attached to the uh, path creator they tend to ignore collision with other objects and with terrain now we can go over here and we can interact with it no problem it still detects us and it still detects enemies and it will still detect you know actual physical moving objects in the game but it will ignore the collision of terrain and other objects and if you look we went from having a boat to now we have a submarine now we didn't have a submarine in the creative toys or in the toy category to start with but just by changing the vertical offset of the path we now have a submarine and how cool is that now imagine if this texture was water this would look just like a submarine moving around so now if you're getting the idea by playing around with the different offsets that are available to us with the objects connected to the path we can create our own custom made objects so we're going to go in here we're going to bring this back up and ooh, wrong direction and we're going to bring it right back up to where it belongs to zero now these next two options forward and backward offset that applies to how far forward or how far backward along the path the object is so in order to show this a little bit better we're going to do something pretty cool here we're going to reset and stop our boat and we're going to bring out another boat once again we're going to go under set pieces and find our boat there it is and we're going to go ahead and just we're just going to place it down and we're going to attach it to the path now in, in this case we're going to need spark mode because we won't be able to target the path with our magic wand since the big boat is sitting right on top of it so we'll go into spark mode and we will select our boat new path connection and we we're going to go find our path point or i should say our path creator and we're going to say toy box path now you'll notice right away it snapped it to the path and it's not oriented properly and it looks like we have a really freaky looking boat it's actually kind of cool, really. It almost looks like a fort instead of a boat. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. We just turned two boats into a fort. That's pretty cool. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to highlight this boat we just added. We're going to go into Properties. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to orient it along the path so it looks correct. Now we're going to back out of here and we're going to reset that so you can see what happens. So now we go. Uh, looks like we only have one boat, but they're both there. They're just stacked on top of each other. Remember, objects on the path ignore collision with each other so we're going to highlight one of the boats we're going to go under properties toy box path and now this time we're going to go to forward and backward offset now this is really cool we're going to move this about eight units up and now we're going to back out of here and we're going to reset it and see what happened as you can now see we turn one boat into a much larger boat. It kind of actually looks like a, a destroyer or the Titanic. It looks really cool. So as you can see, we can make our own custom made objects. Now, imagine if you took some of the basic building blocks and you all put them on the path and you started messing with the vertical and horizontal and forward and backward offsets. You can make your own custom design platforms. You can make almost any shape you really want and it can look almost seamless and really cool. And even better, watch what happens when we play it. As you can see, they move as one, and it looks seamless. Now We now look like we have this giant boat traveling along our path. And even though it's much bigger and they're connected together, look how smooth the transition is as it moves around the corner. That is really cool. We're going to bring this back to a stop. And we're actually going to delete one of our boats. As cool as it is. And now we're going to go into the final few options under properties here. We're going to go into what is called the rotation. Now, rotation is nothing is exactly like it sounds. It rotates the actual object on an axis 
on the path. So if we say changes to 45%, it's going to rotate the boat 45% uh, 45 or 45 yeah, percent at a 45 degree angle along the path. Uh-huh. Never give hillbilly logic. All right, so here we go. And as you can see, now the path has now oriented itself 45 degrees along the path. Now if we hit play, it's going to continue to move just like that. But if you'll notice something as it rounds the corner and goes around, it's still going to attempt to orient itself along the path. The only thing we changed was we actually changed the angle in which it sits. So as you can see, it's still moving along the path correctly. It's just that now it's moving at a 45 degree angle. We're going to change that back. We're going to let it play and change it back. We'll go right back to zero, and as you can see, there it goes. Now, the last option that we have for each individual object attached to the path is called movement style. Now, Movement style determines how the actual object travels along the path. Loop is what you've already been seeing, which it travels from the beginning to the end, and then it resets itself. Our next option is one way and stop. What happens with this is if we select this and back out, you'll see that the boat goes one direction from the beginning to the end, and it will come to a complete stop once it reaches the last point along the path. And actually, let's highlight the boat real fast, and let's change its properties, and let's bring it up to 200 because that way it can, we can get this done a little bit quicker. And we'll back out of there. And now as you see as a boat hits the very last point it comes to a complete stop. Now this is very cool for say if you have if you put like a lake or an ocean in your toy box and you wanted the boat to go from one end, one shore to another you can actually have it programmed to where when the players board the ship they can press a button or they can interact with something and it will take the ship will take it from one point to the next point on the other side of the lake or the other side of the river and dock and then they can get off. It's really cool. So now we're going to go ahead and try another one. Once again we're going to go under movement style and now instead of one way and stop we're going to go back and forth and as it says the boat is going to travel from one end to the other and then return back to the beginning. It's going to just go back and forth just like the cookie that you saw at the beginning of the tutorial. So as you can see there it goes. It's going to turn around. It's going to hit the beginning and it's going to turn itself around and come right back. And there it goes. And once it reaches the end, it's just going to turn around again and go right back. And when the nice thing is, is it keeps its orientation while it's doing that. Let's go into properties again. We're going to go all the way down to the bottom. And this time we're going to do a reverse loop. This is the exact opposite of the initial default behavior. Instead of going from the beginning to the end and disappearing and repeating itself, it's instead going to go from the end to the beginning and repeat itself. So we'll select that and we'll back out. But again, it's keeping its orientation properly. So instead of like actually going in reverse or backwards, it's just traveling the opposite direction on the path. And there it goes. Let's grab it and let's see what's next. Now the next option we have is reverse one way and stop. So all it's going to do is instead of going from the beginning to the end and stop, and now it's going to travel from the end to the beginning and stop. Simple, isn't it? And there we go. Now once it reaches the end, that's the one difference that you need to know, is if you have orientation on, once it reaches the end, it's going to reorient itself back along the path because it reached its start point. We'll go back under Properties, Toy Box Path, and let's see what the next one is. All right, now this is the one you need to pay attention to. This says one way delete, and just like it says, the boat or whatever object you have attached to the path is gonna travel one direction from the beginning to the end. Once it reaches the end, it's gonna delete itself. Now, once it deletes itself, it is gone from your toy box for good. And if you have any logic attached to that object, like let's say you had a locator and you had a lot of, um, lot of logic attached to it, once it reaches the end and it deletes, not only is the object gone, but all that logic you had on it is gone with it. So be sure you actually really want this thing to delete when it happens, because once it goes, you can't get it back, and we're going to see that right now. So again, the boat is going to travel from the beginning to the end. Once it reaches the end of the path, it's going to delete itself. And poof, there it goes. Now, as you can see, even with the magic wand, we're not getting that boat back. We can hit the reset and play and reset and stop buttons all day long and while it's therapeutic to punch buttons all day long 
it's not going to do us any good. We're not going to get that boat back. So keep that in mind. And actually with that, that is the very basics of the path creator. There's really not much else to the basics. With this little bit of knowledge, we can now go ahead and take the Star Destroyers and make them crash into each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and delete all this and we're going to go ahead and now recreate the Star Destroyers crashing into each other. So in order to do that, we're going to get a nice front row seat for this. So let's go into spark mode and we made a pat, ugh, excuse me, we made a platform all the way up here in the air because it's better that way. And now we have all that space in front of us to put our star destroyers. Now, the first thing we're going to want to actually put down in this in this situation like in the beginning of the tutorial, we actually placed the path down first. This time we're actually going to place the star destroyers first so we can see where 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 in the space in the toy box we actually want them to be positioned. So let's go under let's exit spark mode. Let's go get our star destroyers. And we're going to go over here and that looks pretty good. We want to make sure we're far enough away that we can actually see this properly. So that looks pretty good. We're going to place one there. Now, we want a Star Destroyer exactly right above this one. Because we're going to have, if you remember the movie, there was a Star Destroyer that did a nosedive right into another one. So that's what we want to recreate. So we're going to bring this one up about here, eh, a little bit higher. Right there is good. Now, we want the other one, oops, wrong direction. We want the other one on the same path as this one but just on the opposite end. So we're going to move it down and we'll go right about there. That looks fine. And we'll place it down. Now, we can go under our creativity toys and we can actually draw a path. Now we're going to need two paths here. One for this ship and one for the ship that's coming from above down below. And the best thing to do is start right here, right in the, right in the center of the ship. We could go a little bit higher, but we're going to go right here. And we're going to place our initial starting point and now we're going to place another point right in front of the ship. The ship that we want to crash into, that is. And wow, we actually made this path pretty long, so that might not work out too well. We need to back it up a little bit and make sure that it's actually a straight line, which it is. And let's see, how close are we? That looks pretty good. We're going to place that one right there. And this is a little bit of trial and error. So now we're going to exit out of there. And the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to adjust the properties of this path. So let's see if we can target it with a wand. We can. Awesome. So we're going to bring up the properties. First thing we're going to do, if you remember, we're going to turn off the auto start objects when connected. And we're actually also going to adjust the speed of this. 100 seems a little bit slow, especially for something so big. Why don't we try 200 and see what that looks like? We might need to bring it down a little bit. So we're going to sit, hit done and we're going to back out of here. And now we're going to attach the Star Destroyer to the actual path. Highlight it. Bring up new path connection. Highlight the path if you can. Oh, there we go. And we're going to say connect. Toy box path. Now the ship is connected directly to the path. Now the reason why I didn't see the move is because we already had placed it right where it needed to be. And yes, that was intentional. Sure, I'm sticking with that story. Okay, so now we need to draw a path from the Star Destroyer above to the one below. Once again, we're going to bring out our path creator. And we want to go, we want to basically do the same thing. Um, the problem is we need to see where we want the actual impact point on the Star Destroyer to be. So I like it right about here. I like it dead center and right here. It looks really good when the ships collide. So. We'll end our path. Oh, oh, I made a mistake. Sorry about that. Let's actually exit out of there. And luckily, it does not put the path down. So we know where we want to be. So now let's go back up until we get right below the ship, which should be right about here. Looks good. So we're going to start the path here. We're going to go straight down until we reach that point right above the ship. A little bit closer would be nice. There we go. That looks good. So now we're going to exit out of there and we're going to do the same thing we just did with the other Star Destroyer. We're going to target the path point. Oh, we might need to get spark mode for this. I don't think we're going to be able to target it. No, we're not. All right, so let's get into spark mode. I think presentation wise, the wand looks better when you're trying to do a tutorial, but let's go ahead and spark mode. Let's go up to the path point, or I should say the path creator. 
and we're going to do properties and once again we're going to turn off auto start and we're going to back out of there and now since we're in spark mode we're just going to go ahead and highlight our star destroyer we're going to say new path connection we're going to go down here we're going to connect it to the path toy box path now this time it moved a little bit now here's the changes we need to make we're going to highlight the star destroyer one more time we're going to say properties and we're going to go into toy box path and we're going to change the speed and the orientation so we're going to go 200 we're going to say done and we're going to orient it along the path and that is actually going to make the star destroyer do a nose dive now we actually should have done the same thing over here just to be safe and we're going to go do that even though it's already oriented along the path it's it's cleaner and better to go ahead and make sure you're doing everything correctly so we're going to go under toy box path and we're going to orient it and it should and it should stay where it is but again just to be safe now we need some way to fire all this off now we could use regular buttons but I th I'm beginning to think maybe we can do something a little bit fancier than that you know what no nope. we're running it this tutorial is already running a little long let's go ahead and just use some buttons now you can use any type of logic once again to fire off actual path creators but let's go ahead and just use some buttons for the sake of time alright let's see here you know what no we're not going to do that we're going to actually do something a little bit more creative so let's go under our creativity toys here let's find our trigger area let's put this at the end of the path here besides that this way we won't have buttons in the way and we won't have to worry about seeing the buttons while we're trying to see the star destroyers crash yeah we're going to do that so let's go ahead and put that down and we're also going to need a new toy called context sensitive button you know what nope I changed my mind because I'm trying to keep this tutorial rather simple we'll get into that in the next tutorial we're just gonna go ahead and use buttons plus it'll save us some time alright so let's go ahead and put down once again a start and a reset button so let's go on uh, let's go into spark mode we're gonna do no logic connection pressed and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn on both path creators with one button and we're gonna say reset and stop this is so if we make a mistake we can go ahead and reset it and, and make our adjustments once again new logic connection pressed and we'll go over to this path and we'll say reset and stop if we can target and we'll say reset and stop now we're gonna use the other button to reset and play did I just delete that oh good gravy I was in a spark mode and I thought I deleted that Whew, that was close it's another reason why I like using the magic wand I'm less likely to delete stuff by accident alright so let's go to this button and we're gonna say new logic connection pressed we're going to go over here and we're going to say reset and play. And we need to do one more time. We're going to go ahead and reset and play the other path creator. New logic connection pressed. And once again, we're going to highlight the beginning point of our path. and we're gonna say reset and play now let's test it out and see what happens before we add any special effects or any kind of flair let's make sure it actually works because we might need to make some adjustments along the path so the first button we're gonna hit is reset and play and see what the ship does that we oriented and as you can see already this looks incredible that ship is going to do a nosedive directly down into the other ship. Now, we're going to hit reset and play and see what happens. And as you can see, the Star Destroyers are going to start moving towards each other and crash into each other. Now, there's two problems I notice with this. Number one is because this other ship is so far away, it's taking a lot longer to get to that ship, even though they're both moving at double speed. So what we should do is change the speed of the one moving down and leave the speed at the one. Now nah, you know what? Actually, we're going to shorten the path of the one on the right. We're going to leave the top one alone because it looks incredible. And all we need to do now is add some special effects and some explosions. So let's go ahead and hit reset and stop. 
That puts everything back to where it belongs. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to target this path and we're going to shorten it up. It's taken, it's taken way too long to get to the other ship. Oh no, we used to be able to target this with our wand. Can we no longer do that? Oh, that's a shame. All right, we're going to need to go in spark mode. So what we're going to do is, this can be done in real time. You don't have to redo the entire path. All you simply need to do is come over here, grab your starting point, select the move option, and we're just going to shorten the path. It's that simple. And we'll actually bring it pretty far up, and we'll go right there. Now we're going to exit out of here. And we're going to end up on the Star Destroyer. Let's get back into Spark Mode. And now what we're going to do is we're going to hit Reset and Stop so we can readjust that ship. Because now it's no longer properly aligned with the path. Uh-oh. Let's get back over here. I'm not quite above the platform. We're about to fall to our deaths. Now we're going to hit Reset and Play. Or Reset and Stop, I mean. And now you notice that we shifted the the uh, Star Destroyer just a little bit further up the path and that should be pretty good. So now what we need to do is to add some actual explosions. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into our ribbon. We're already under Creativity Toys. We're going to need two special effects generators and two locators. So first let's give our, uh, our effects generator. One and two. And now we need two locators. One for each explosion. One right here, and one right here. Now, here's another pro tip. Before you go relocating your locators, it's better to make your logic connection. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a logic connection from our effects generator to our locator. So we're just gonna say, new locator connection, and we're gonna target the locator, and we're gonna say effects location. All we're doing is we're telling the effects generator where we want that effect to happen, and we're using a locator to do that. So once again, highlight it, new locator connection, and effects location. Now we can actually grab our locators and place them. So we're going to take this one and this one's going to be for the ship above. And we're going to place it right at the impact point with the other ship. So this should look pretty darn good. Alright, so we're going to go right here. We'll put it right on the ship. Uh, we'll put it right above the ship. Now we need to go ahead and grab our other locator and place that where we want it. And that's going to be right at the front or the impact point of the other ship. Let's go over here, let's grab our locator. We're going to move it. And we're going to place it right in front of the ship. Right there is perfect. Now, we actually need something to fire off the actual effects. So here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. All right, remember how we can do logic from actual path points? And that's what we're going to do right here. And actually, if we can grab a hold of it, we're going to actually make two adjustments here. Because if you notice that the top, ship, uh, top Star Destroyer kind of went pretty far down into, this sh into the other ship. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually, first we're going to grab it. We're going to shorten this up a little bit, say right about there. And now we're also going to make an actual logic connection. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here with our in spark mode. We're going to grab. Oh, uh oh. We're going to try to grab our path point. Oh, we had it. Oh, we lost it. Oh, we had it. There we go. And we're going to go under new logic connection. Point reached by object on path. That means whatever object is on this path, once it reaches this point, it's going to fire off logic. So in this case, we're going to say point reached by object on path. And we're going to come over here and we're going to tell it to fire off the special effects. Highlight it. We're going to say, in this case, we're going to actually loop these ones. We're going to say play looped. And we're going to go under explosions. And we're going to look for, ooh, you know what? If we're doing loop, we can't do that because it will break the game. So we're going to actually cancel that one more time. And we're going to say play once. And we're going to go under explosions. And now you'll see we actually have the option for a huge explosion. Because the explosion is so huge, if we tried to loop it, it wouldn't work. So we're going to go over here. And now we're going to show you another way we can actually use the 
uh, path creator itself to fire off logic. Now, we use the last point on that ship in order to fire off the logic. This time we're going to actually do something else. And this is another nice feature of the path creator. If we highlight the starting point, which we're getting very close to, we have to be, there we go. And if you look, you'll notice if we hit the triangle or the top button, there's a plus symbol. That means you can actually add a brand new path point to a path that you've already placed down. So we're going to do that. And you notice it automatically places it at about the halfway point of the path. Now we don't quite want it there. We want it moved a little bit closer. So right about when the ships collide, this explosion should go off. So we're going to put it right about here. Should be good. We're going to place it. And what just happened? For some reason, this happens once in a while, for some reason that path decided to go ahead and connect itself to this other path. I'm not exactly sure why it did that. That's not a good thing. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to delete that. That's a little strange. I'm not sure why it did that. It doesn't always happen either, so we're going to try it one more time and see what happens. Highlight our path again. We're going to add another path. And this time it's probably because we're getting so close to the other path. And you'll notice we can actually move it off of the path itself. It's probably because we're getting too close. Let's go ahead and place it here and see what happens. Nope, once again it, it anchored onto the other path point. I'm not sure why it did that. It's because we have, well what is, what's going on is we have two paths right next to each other. Oh, well, within close proximity of each other. So it's actually connecting these paths for some reason and we don't want that. So let's go ahead and we're going to delete that. And instead, we're just going to have to move this path point a little bit further back. I wanted to show you that other option, but we're going to do that in another tutorial. So we're going to grab this and we're going to move it back. We're going to say right about here should be good. Ah, a little bit further, right there. So now we're going to make a logic connection once again to the other effects generator. So we're going to say new logic connection, point reached by object on path, and we're going to go over here and highlight this other effects generator. And we're going to say, play once, explosions, huge explosion. Now, to make this a little bit more complete, we're going to add one more toy, and then we will be done. We are now going to go under gameplay toys, and we're going to find our, I believe it's under gameplay toys, yes, our sound effects generator. So now we're going to put this down, and we're going to make a logic connection to this to make some explosion sounds. So in order to fire that off, we're actually going to just use the actual explosions themselves. So when we highlight this, we're going to sit there and say new logic connection, triggered, come over here to our effects generator, and we're going to say action, and we should have something, yep, large explosion. Now we're going to do the same thing for this. New logic connection, the special effect is triggered, we're going to go action, and once again we're going to look for large explosion. That is it. We are done. We're just going to make a change to the properties here. And we're going to say 3D sound or at speaker locator on. We're going to turn that off because what happens is, is now anywhere we're, we're at on the toy box, we should hear the explosion. So we're going to back out of that. And now just for safety, we're going to hit, first we're going to hit stop and reset. And you notice the uh, because of the path got adjusted a little bit, that above ship moved just a little bit, but it actually looks a little bit better. I like it. And now we're going to hit reset and play, and we're going to see if we place everything exactly where we want it. As things go ahead and start to move, we should see an explosion. Oh! Do you know what we forgot to do? Oh my. Reset and stop. We made a boo-boo. All right, so first thing we need to do is we forgot to change the movement style. So let's come into here. Let's go underneath the properties. Let's go under toy box path, and we forgot to change the movement. We still have it stuck on loop. One way and stop. Now we need to do the same thing to this ship. I keep saying ship, sorry about that, to the Star Destroyer. And we're going to say toy box path, and we're going to come down here. We're going to say one way and stop. And again, the reason why this Star Destroyer shifted position is because when we were trying to add that path point, it made the path move a little bit. So it's, again, an experimentation thing. 
Now, if we can, we want to move this path point up a little bit because it's still firing off a little too slowly for us. So let's go ahead and get into spark mode. And you can really tweak this until you get it exactly the way you want it. We're just going to make one more minor adjustment and then we'll be done with this. Maybe. Oh, I wish I could have target you in the lawn. Well, this is painful. Oh, we had it. There we go. Now we're actually going to drag that back up again. It's still too far close, too far down to the ship. We'll put it right there. All right, let's exit spark mode. Let's, or actually, let's get back in spark mode. Let's go back to our viewing platform and let's see what happens. Now we're going to hit reset and play, and hopefully this looks really good. There we go. We got the first Star Destroyer going to hit. And we get the explosion, and we get the second Star Destroyer hitting. We get that explosion. As you can see, that looks pretty awesome. Now, if we were to do this in a toy box, we'd probably want to move things a little bit. I'd like to shift that first Star Destroyer back towards the back of the other ship a little bit further so it looks a little bit better because it's kind of hitting the nose. And then that other Star Destroyer, we can adjust a little bit more until that explosion happened at just the right time. But we'll go ahead and watch it one more time. As you can see, the Star Destroyer hits. We're going to get an explosion. We're going to get another explosion. And there's our Star Destroyers crashing into each other. Now, I really would like to shift that. It's really bothering me. You have no idea. But this tutorial has already reached an hour length. So I think we'll quit right there. So in our next tutorial we are going to go ahead and we are going to do some more advanced mechanics with this uh, path creator and we're going to see some really cool examples of things we can do in our toy box. So until then, take care, thank you for watching, and bye bye